Well, it's good to see my friend John Farina here. It's good to see you. Um, we're, we're honored to be here. I don't think you ever take anything like this lightly, and especially with the fact of everything that we've gone through the last few years. But more importantly than that, uh, it's an opportunity for these players to do something that they have seen uh, th since their childhood and thought about and worked towards and, and built their games for, and here they are. And uh, there's no doubt that there's some great lessons for our team all year long, but the biggest one is that the more that you stick with it, the harder you work, the more extra you do, uh, the more you persevere, great things can happen. And, and that's what they've been doing this season. So we know we've got a, a major, major task in front of us in playing this Kentucky team. We know how good uh, the South region is. We knew that from the time the brackets came out. And Kentucky is, is considerably better than what they were when we played them when they were number one in the country, and they were really good then. So uh, their team is, is, is clicking and really all cylinders. Their, their team defense is, is phenomenal. Uh, their, their individual play has improved, which has made their offense better. Uh, they're extremely, extremely well coached. And I think Coach Calipari has done a phenomenal job of, of not only making that team better, but making that team with so many young guys very, very cohesive and absolutely uh, committed to sharing the basketball. And I think that's a big part of why they're successful. Uh, our success comes from many of the same things. We've improved. Uh, our, our young men are getting tougher mentally and physically all the time. We've been through some great battles this year, some that we were successful in and some that we weren't and we learned from. But they've continued to take every game for what it is, which is the most important game on their schedule. When, you, when you're coming off what we've dealt with the last couple of years, you have no choice but to treat every game as the most important game. And if you do that enough, it leads to moments like this for these guys to play uh, in an environment like this. So we're excited for it, and I'll open it up. We'll start here on our right. Tom, uh, given what you've gone through, can, what are your... Oh, the book sales, by the way. Excellent book. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, what are your memories of those, of those early uh, days at IU, those early practices, and were you to win this game, putting in context how far you've come, what, what would it mean to this program? Oh, I think it would mean, it would mean a lot. I, I think everything that we have done this year means a lot because, again, there was no... There was no ability, we, we, we figured out early on that there wasn't gonna be able to be a timeline uh, or a timetable when, because when, you're not starting over. You're, you're starting over in your program, but your competition is, is doing far from anything but moving forward. And, and the competition in our league had been, uh, has been at an all-time high the last few years. So uh, the, the first, the, the practices on our team, we had a lot of guys that I give them a lot of credit. They had no true idea what we were really trying to do. They had no real idea why they were being asked to do what they were being asked to do at the level and the intensity level. It was different. It was challenging. But, but they continued to, to understand it, even when they didn't want to. And they continued to, to make it part of who they are. And I think if, if, if you saw us practice now, you'd see a lot of guys that, that working hard and doing extra, that's just, that's just part of who they are now. At the beginning, that wasn't. They had to learn the value uh, of intensity at, at the collegiate level and learn how to keep going when things weren't, when there weren't any positive results, you know, on the court. We didn't have wins or, or strings of wins to, to give them that confidence. Their confidence had to come from belief that what they were doing would, would help them get there. So for, for the program now to be in this position and to be playing against a team like this and to have already played them and had success against them, it means that, that a lot of people, the players, the coaches, every one of the staff members, when you, when you look at our doctors, our trainers, academic advisors, everybody has been working towards a common goal, a common theme, and, that, and that's to get Indiana back to some sort of excellence. Question here in the middle of the room. Coach, uh, what does the kind of the historical significance given these programs and their backgrounds. What does that mean to you as, you know, I'm sure obviously somebody who's followed the game, what Indiana and Kentucky have meant to college basketball? And uh, do you think your players get that sort of uh, what these two programs have uh, been about? Well, I think so. I, I think we've got a lot, of, a lot of young men that really love basketball. And if you love basketball, you're a fan of it. I think uh, they followed the game. It's like, it's like uh, when they had that moment to see their name come across uh, on the selection show. I mean, they'd seen that forever. And to have that be a part of it is, is, is really important. Well, they've, 
the, the Indiana-Kentucky games, those have always been big. And for me personally, uh, there's no question it's a big deal. There's always been a special aura uh, around and about Indiana to me. And I would say the same thing about Kentucky. I mean, when you, when you grow up and you love the game and then you get involved in it professionally, you know that these are two incredibly storied programs that have won at high levels for a long period of time. Uh, there's a lot of household names that were coaches, players, a lot of household name teams, and where people can remember a year and, and remember a team and they can remember a lot of things about them. And I think when you have two programs that are like that, that's great for the game, but it's great for all of sports. Question here on our right. Coach, how important is an early December game in late March, and how do you emphasize or de-emphasize that to your players? Well, we don't de-emphasize it, but we don't overemphasize it. I think there's a balance to it. I think there's uh, – certainly there are similarities to it. I think, first and foremost, it gives players confidence. And, and uh, to play a team like Kentucky, uh, there's a lot of different stages you've got to go through, and belief is a big part of that because they're so good. And you have to literally believe you can win the game because, because – uh, they have the ability to come in and, and throw that, those first couple blows and, and, and punches in a game, and, and they're hard to recover from. And, and if you don't believe you can win, it's a lot harder to recover from that. So I think those things play into it. But there are definitely certain things from the game that stand out that are, that are still very, very tangible for us. There are some things where they've improved. I mean, there's certain parts of the game plan that are still in play, and there's others that we've changed. So I think it's like any other game you would play and then play them again in an environment like this or a, a Big Ten tournament. You keep learning not only from that game but from all the other games you've played, and then it becomes a product of all those experiences. Question on our left. Coach, the, uh, the weight and the strength that Cody put on before this season, how much did that do for him and how much did that help, uh, I guess, sort of everything sort of fall, fall into place for the rest of this team? Well, I think they all worked really hard. I mean, a, a year ago right now, we were, we were right away in our weight training. You know, we were in our individual workouts and we were in weight training. We took the shortest amount of time that we've ever taken as a coaching staff from one season to the next. We took that spring break period and, and that was it. And we were right back to work. So I think everybody has gained uh, considerably in strength. I think that, that the conditioning, but again, what you learn it, it, when you start to succeed is that the mental toughness that you get from that, that's got a lot to do with your overall conditioning too. And I think Cody came in with tremendous mental toughness. I think the added strength has helped him. It's helped him gain confidence in games. It's helped him see that he can do different things, that he can uh, not only hold up, but he can flourish, you know, with a lot of minutes or uh, over an extended period of time. Every time that he maybe got a little bit tired this season, he was able to recover from it so quickly because of that mental toughness and because he's in such great shape. So there's no doubt that he came in and he attacked uh, the weight room uh, the same way I think that he attacks his game and his schoolwork. I mean, he put a lot into it when he got to Indiana. I think he's, uh, when, when, when Cody is, and, and he's locked into a lot of things. When he's locked in, uh, he's one of those young men that's got so much natural talent that it just kind of keeps coming uh, the more that he works at it. And I think that's, that's what his body has done. Another question on the left. Hey, Tom, uh, what, what I talked to Joni about two months ago, she said that in the last year, year and a half, you've changed quite a bit. She said she senses a piece about you now that you don't sweat the small stuff quite as much. Um, your, your language has changed just a little bit. Uh, do you think... My language has changed a lot. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> do you, do you think, think that's true? And if so, why? I know it's true. I, I just think it's... Uh, I, I think uh, when, you, when you go through tough times... First off, you mature. I mean, so we, so we have three children and, and you have a big task like we have at Indiana, and then all of a sudden it's a lot bigger than you ever thought it would be. And it's a lot more challenging than you could have ever imagined. And you realize that you've got to have really good people around you, you've got to have a great staff, but you also realize that no matter what you think, uh, God is the one that is going to be completely uh, in, 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 front and, in front and center on this. And, and I think what it does is you can, you can shy away from your faith and think you're going to do it on your own and think that things are just going to work themselves out or you can become a lot stronger as a Christian in your faith. And I don't think there's any question that that's, that that's happened for me. And I've never been away from church. I've never, I was always, always grew up in church, but I don't think there's any question that I feel uh, completely different. I shouldn't say com completely different. It's not a good word. That I feel somewhat different um, just based on how I I've learned a lot of new perspective and, and, uh, 
it, 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 def it definitely comes from, from, from a closest to God. It comes from, you know, studying the Bible. It comes from different outlets. But it also comes from really looking at this in the sense that, it, you know, here we're responsible. When I brought my family out of Marquette, and we came out of the winning and came out of all those things, it wasn't, it wasn't, they didn't have anything to do with what happened at Indiana either. But it was my responsibility to make sure that they knew that um, we could continue to flourish, we could continue to move forward as a family, and we were going to continue to try to do the right things. And I think you, you really do learn to, to get out of yourself a little bit more and get a lot more into uh, how everybody else views these things. You don't, you don't do it in the sense of you, you take a lot of direction from other people, but you really do care and you want other people to, to feel successful and to feel confidence and you spend more time trying to make sure that that's happening rather than worrying about yourself. And I think that's, uh, that's, that's something that God gives you. Question on our right. Tom, two things happened in that first game with Kentucky that haven't really happened much since. Davis in foul trouble. He hasn't had more than three fouls since that game in any game. Jones, I think Cal said, you know, gave them a zero in that game. Uh, has been on a tear of late. How much do you prepare your guys for how different the game is if those two are both on the floor, if you can't count on that, if they're both out there and active the way that they have been most of the rest of the year? Well, I'm pretty sure we prepared for them to be on the floor when we played them the first time. So I don't think that, that we're going to prepare any differently. You prepare for their very best. And, and we take a lot of the best that we see from Kentucky and, and show that to our team. It's not like uh, we don't want to spend a lot of time showing clips of, of people that, that didn't play them right or, or didn't come in with that mindset that they could beat them. You want to show their team at their best. And, and uh, you're probably right. They have not played much without Davis. They, they, I don't think, I mean, as good as each individual player is on their team, I think it's a great credit to, to John and the way that no matter who's there, no matter who's not there, they continue to play at a really high level. I don't think that defensive field goal percentage is an accident. I think they're really, really good. Is, is their, their individual defense is strong because of their talent and athleticism, but he's got them playing team defense in such a strong way. So, again, you prepare for the best of it. You don't. Uh, you have contingency plans for your own team. You don't really base it on if two or three guys are going to be in foul trouble. That that can drive you nuts. Take two more questions here, and then in the middle of the room, uh, Tom, can you talk about how did you first get to know John? and uh, your, how your friendship developed over the years and just what your relationship with him, what it means to you. Well, I think, I think John is somebody, there's a little, we have a little difference in age, and I, um, when I was a young assistant, I read a story one time uh, that was in the old Big East magazine. He was coaching at Pittsburgh, and they used to put out magazines on the different leagues, and there was a, a side story in there that it really struck home with me. He said, to make it, and I'm paraphrasing, but, but to make it as a head coach, You've got to be known for something. And, and uh, he said, you, you, recruiting is what I have really wanted to be known for at that point. And, and so maybe he got his job for the recruiting. But as I continued to watch him and get to know him a little bit, kept, I, I kept looking at a guy I think is a great coach. I mean, I think his and, – and, and where it maybe really took off was when we were both in Conference USA. And, and uh, we played them one night on a Friday night – uh, I believe it was his first year. We won a game, and I remember talking about how really good of a coach I think he was and, and, the, and the things that we learned from him. And he thanked me later for, for giving him credit, he says, because he's not used to that in his career with other people that they have faced. And that always stuck with me, too, because it, I think you've got to give credit where credit is due. And if I didn't know John, I'd give him a ton of credit for what kind of coach he is, but I do know John, and, and I learn a lot. From him, our conversations are, are very much about basketball a lot of times. Uh, he's been tremendous to me. Uh, there's no question in the last couple of years as we've gone through this, the phone has, the phone has uh, uh, rang, and I've answered it, and it's been him more than really anybody else outside of my family in this business. And uh, I will always appreciate that because it wasn't just, hey, hang in there. Okay, anybody can tell you that. It was tangible things. Okay, have you thought about this? Are you looking at that? Things that really make you think. And, and I think uh, John has got so many things figured out. And when you watch him, Coach, I always started it and when he was in the league, watching how they defended and played against other teams. And I learned so much about spacing, uh, so much about ball movement, 
uh, a lot about the pick and roll game, things like that, just from observing him. And then, and then we've been out of the league, so we've, we've been able to share more of those things. But I would say with him, he never changes, and he never changes, and uh, I always treats me the same, and I'd like to think I do the same. I have tremendous respect for him. Last question, middle of the room. Along the same lines, you guys are such good friends. How do you all kind of come to terms with the fact that in order for you to have success, he has to go through a lot of pain, his season is over, and vice versa? Well, I don't know. I, I don't think you spend a lot of time thinking about that. I, I think it's um, – there, there's what you learn is there's very few relationships. I, I shouldn't say what you learn. What I've learned, what I've learned is there's very few relationships that can weather a lot of storms. Okay, and in this business, it gets so competitive that you really, you just sometimes you don't end up as close, or you don't have the conversations with people that you used to have, and you just you accept it. It's the way that it is. You don't wish anything negative, you know. And again, I still, I still think that there's a lot of people out there that that. That I would, people would look, I don't know if they're this good, I don't know if they're that good, and yet I watch them and I learn a ton from them. And it's the same thing in other sports. But uh, I think when it's competitive like this, you just understand that it's part of it. And uh, you have very few people that you really, really want that you, that you, that you, you, you've got those extra feelings for when they're successful or when they're not. And, and I think if you've got a couple people like that in your life, then you're fortunate to have them. And then I would say that he is. I, I, but it's not going to change anything tomorrow night at 9.50. I promise you that. And at first edge, it looks like he's trying to get I'm going to try to get it back. You know, so just the way that it is. Coach, thank you for your thank time. You. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you.